For the past eight years we've been living and working on a sailboat. We've been mostly sailing along the equator, which has provided us bath warm water to dive into any time of day. I've lost count of how many times I've dived into the ocean, only to be awestruck by what's below and to be put into a blissful, meditative state. Since Riley had nominated me to do an ice water plunge in the Arctic, today I'm diving into negative 1.8 degrees of fear. I was about to welcome an entirely new sensation, an instant numbness as my blood vessels constricted to protect my vital organs. I'd been told that the moment you hit the water, you can hardly feel the cold, it's so cold. Join us as we embrace a cultural phenomenon dating back to ancient Rome and ancient Greece. I was hoping to discover the benefits of the cold water, maybe a boost in energy levels, attention and focus in the brain, maybe even a high like I've never felt before. I guess we'll see. I hate you! <laughs> we were sure this would be a sail we'd never forget. Welcome to our new temporary floating home in the Arctic Ocean. We thought long and hard about bringing our two children on this trip, who are one and three years old. But in the end, we were confident this was something we could safely do together, especially with the help of Rachel, who we'd recruited in the US to help us out. Svalbard is where we'll be spending the next three weeks before moving to our new trimaran in Asia. Exciting times ahead. Thanks to you guys for being here for it all. Elena's about to do a polar plunge. Everyone's just convinced her to go. Just go on It's mind over matter. Know that you can, don't think that you can. And Elena was all psyched and then Darwin wakes up three minutes before and now she's freaking out and everyone's going, five minutes on deck. Darwin will be fine, but it just makes us feel bad. What's happening, Christian? Well, Elena wants to go for a little swim. So. <laughs> I think you might have been pretty persuasive. <laughs> well, she asked for it and yeah. uh, we deliver. Uh, so we're gonna get the Zodiac out. She can um, jump from the boat and then uh, she can taste a bit of the Svalbard water. So we're gonna take enough safety precautions that she'll be completely uh, safe. These are all preparations for Elena jumping in the water. It's a very serious thing. We've got a rope for her, two people in the dinghy just to uh, grab her up. And then we have the dinghy driver and you filming. Plenty of precautions. Completely safe. I love you till I'm going. Not long, you need a towel. I've got a towel. Flip flops? Flip oh my flops. god, look at you. I'm shivering, I don't know if it's the best idea. So Let's do cold. it. Let's do, do it. Do I need shoes? Let's do it. Yeah, you need flip flops. Oh my god, why am I doing come this? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't know if I can. You have to. Yeah. <gasps> Who is the Wim Hof person? Someone needs to convince me. <laughs> Wait a few more rounds. Okay, so. thank you, I will. <laughs> we have a rope for you as well, which we put around through. Okay. To make sure. Yeah, the real safe. deal. It will take quite a few more minutes, so you should not be cold already before you Okay, go. I'm definitely cold already. And then just put some leggings on. Do some push-ups, do some squats, go down and grab your pants. What about a tea? No, That's not going to do much. No. <laughs> yeah, honestly, do some push-ups. Okay, I'll just go put some pants on. Yeah. Hot tea waiting for you when you get back. At what temperature would she jump in and just immediately die? Well, <laughs> water doesn't go much below yeah, freezing, of course. It get? Don't breathe in. Oh wait, I'm gonna do this. I don't know if that helps. Sure. <laughs> Clean your room, would you? For heaven's sake. It's stressful. I'm really hating on Kara and Nate because I'm sure this is where you got the idea. <laughs> Can people actually die? I'm squatting in solidarity. <laughs> Oh my god. Kara does a backflip. Should I do a backflip? <laughs> I don't know if you should do a backflip. If I want to die, I'm going to die in style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I'm doing it. I hate you. <laughs> I really do. I'm going to get in this boat, so you need to wait. Oh, great. Oh, oh, I've got two more minutes. We're jumping in the Zodiac in case we need to provide emergency assistance. <laughs> They're not mucking around. Don't think you can, Elena. No, you can. This is happening. Just go accept it. Oh, God. Okay, ready? <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna make it on my ear longer. I'm just gonna do it. Hey, Jan. <laughs> Holy crap! Whoa! 
I'm in some weird state right now. How do I get out of this thing? Can you climb? There's, there's no bottom step. Okay. Can I have the dinghy, please? My legs are freezing off. That was actually really nice. Okay, I literally cannot lift my body up because my legs are screwed. Marking around at all. Thanks, guys. Holy crap. How are your feet? It's pretty cold. Day? Should we get you in the shower? Yeah. Okay. That was great. I highly recommend. <laughs> no regrets. Thank you. I'm not going in there. I did it. I did it. It was awesome. Oh, I feel invigorated. I bet you do. Yeah, Cara and Nate. <laughs> you need a warm shower now. I kind of just want to soak in the moment a little bit longer. You said I, soak in the moment? Yes, Riley. When I went <laughs> under the water, my body just like stopped and I didn't even like paddle. My breathing just stopped. I could feel my brain like go into slow motion mode. It was like boom, calm. It was incredible. Scientifically speaking, the moment I held my breath and jumped in, I began to undergo the mammalian dive reflex. This reflex is the body's psychological response to submersion in cold water. Blood flows away from the skin and the limbs to protect the vital organs like the heart in order to conserve energy. The diving reflex exists in humans as a survival mechanism, rather than how it exists in seals, whales and penguins, which use the diving reflex as an adaptation to function in their everyday life. Would you do that once a week? Yeah. You do it once a day, it would get easier. Maybe, but I'm loving that, that was so good. Hey, you killed that so hard, considering how poorly you did in the ice baths in Florida. I know, I was the cutest person in the ice bath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. No, that was 20 seconds. You're not even cold. I guess you weren't in for long enough. Hey, can you pass me my gloves over there? My hands are a bit cold. I'm going for a shower. I love that crazy. <laughs> Shivering so bad. We did it. There's another one jumping in. There's another one jumping oh my in. I've got regret already. <laughs> is the bottom of your feet the coldest part at the moment? No, it is at the moment, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> What did you think about all that, mate? It won't catch me in there. <laughs> <laughs> Elena and the kids have just come out. Hello. So I'm about halfway up. It's pretty slow going because we've got to clip in here and have three points of contact to be clipped in at least once. And every time we hit a massive iceberg, I pause. How are we going, Ispion? Very good. Not so long to the top now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a big one. Yeah, you're not coming here in a fiberglass boat. That iceberg there was huge. When we hit it, presumably Marco was also steering to starboard, but it hit on the port side and we glanced and it moved the whole front of the bow, like 30 degrees to starboard. That's when you know it's a real big one. And the gadung. You can tell the size of the berg by the gadungs. <laughs> I'm a little bit mindful of keeping poor old Ispjorn up the mast for half a day, but I could hang out here forever. This is definitely the box seat because there's no wind at the moment if there was any sort of wind this would be pretty uncomfortable i've been up on a catamaran and because there's the two hulls the wave comes and it doesn't roll the top of the mast it goes like at the very That's top the, of the pendulum it's a very fast movement yeah. it's it's much harder to hold on yeah because it doesn't have the stabilizing keel no there's no keel so it's always Vertical. following the surface yes of the water. yeah exactly there's a boat coming up ahead we've spied one on the distance yes the ispion which is kind of like your name. Yes, my name is Espion. And I've been saying it incorrectly. <laughs> Espion means uh, polar bear. And so I've been calling you polar bear for yes, the last few yes, days. Yes. But that's not the first time in my life that's happened. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> that just broke in half. Oh, the Nordic mashing icebergs in half. That's incredible. 30 centimeters of steel in the bow. Incredibly <laughs> thick, actually. Good to know. The conditions of this Norwegian archipelago are so serene compared to many of the oceans we've sailed, but they do carry their own dangers. Just as we'd keep our eyes peeled for coral heads in the Bahamas or squalls when sailing the Atlantic, here the crew have their eyes constantly on the icebergs, monitoring it for size and shape, which is hard, you know, because the tip of the iceberg is often just the tip of the iceberg. 
Looking for an anchor spot. A bit tricky with all the ice around, but there's a spot over there between 40 and 30 meters. And uh, it also gives a good landing uh, to go ashore. 40 is pretty deep. Yeah, it's pretty deep. We have quite some chain. Take a throw in three or four shackles. The shackle is 15 fathom. So that's around 90 or 100 meters or so. It's a bit tricky with the dinghy since that one is made of, uh, of rubber and it uh, doesn't do that well on icebergs. But, uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, so the bergs can be sharp? Yeah, certainly. It can be uh, razor sharp. All right, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's like a very huge iceberg which yeah. is frozen and, and stiff. Uh, that's also why the Titanic, it's sort of like, like, like a blade went through it. Yeah. It can be very sharp. And especially this glacial ice is stronger than sea ice, the pack ice. You need to be careful with it. Yeah. But usually the trick is just to go slow. Yeah. How are you going? How was the climb? Good. Cool. How's he going? Good. I think they're just hungry. They're always hungry. They are, hey? Yeah. He's just pointing at food. And he's like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. It would help if he said the word hungry properly, but he says hungry. It <laughs> kills me. What time's dinner? Like, I don't know, 7.30, why? I'm hungry. Oh, it's 10 o'clock, the sun's still up, but I can do a pretty good job of blacking out this room. I can't tell you what a relief it is to go to bed and not have to worry about a squall in the middle of the night. I know that I won't be needed, not have to listen out for Riley. It'll be a much different sleep to what I would have on our boat sailing in the night. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy this sleep. I am on holiday. What a treat. Good night. Did you hear it? Yeah. Did you hear it cracking, Lenny? What? You might be getting sick of our sleep updates, but Darwin was up at 3 a.m. So I grabbed him at four. Yeah, no, like that's six, the yeah. Yeah, seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I grabbed him <laughs> much, much later and looked after him. So Elena got to sleep in until about 9.30. What are we doing today? Uh, we pushed past our original destination because the sailing was so beautiful this morning. But everyone just said, let's just keep going. We'd now covered over 200 nautical miles on the Nautilite. If you missed our last sailing episode, you might want to catch that one too. I'll link it in the comments below. Anyway, before we explore a quaint Arctic research station and take you on an incredible hike, you ought to know that we've been working our butts off to edit these videos for you in a timely fashion. From Asia, actually, where I'm going to take you away to for just a minute to share with you today's sponsor. Where is the beautiful... Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're loving the episode. Just wanted to say a massive thanks to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this one. We've been drinking Athletic Greens since last year in December. If you guys haven't heard of Athletic Greens, it's actually now called AG1 and it's a vitamin, mineral, probiotic drink that covers all of your foundational nutritional needs. Gone are the days that Riley and I have to go into a health food store and buy a bunch of different pills. It can be quite overwhelming. It's so nice to know that everything we need for the day is inside every scoop of AG1. Riley and I have definitely felt a difference in our energy levels, which I think is what we love the most about it. The other things are kind of more silent, you don't realize it's going on, but it's supporting your gut health. It has adaptogens and it's made from whole food sourced ingredients and it tastes great. So if you guys are looking for an all rounder, something to cover all bases, Athletic Greens are being legends and they're gonna give you five travel packs, which are super handy little things if you wanna make a drink on the go. They're gonna give you five of those for free and an immune supporting year supply of their vitamin D3 and K2 all with your first purchase today you can just head to athleticgreens.com forward slash SLV or I'll pop the link in the description below as well hey little mister that one eight 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 out of the kitchen <laughs> We were about to anchor right by the biggest glacier we'd seen on this trip. To be honest, I was more excited for Lenny to see it than I was to see it myself. Is this the one at the end the most beautiful? Yeah, it certainly is. The Kongs Breeze. Okay. So it's the King's Glacier. It's a really big one, also producing a lot of ice. We're gonna get as close as we can. If you put your fingers to the horizon, it's like two fingers and then the tip of it is uh, on top. Then you're still at the same distance. Because every now and then a piece breaks off and there might be so much ice shattering. We could land on deck, Gee. but we can get really close to make some good pictures. In some parts, the glacier really did feel like it was towering over us. Sheer cliff faces in combinations of blues and whites. Colours my eyes had never experienced before. They were drawn to it like they were drawn to fire. I already knew I would never forget this landscape. We're actually tied off to a dock and the sun is out. It's so beautiful. We're going to go for a walk around town. Feels like we've been on this boat for a very, very long time already. Anything to add, Lenny? Was that English? 
Amongst the phenomenal scenery, this small town is a hotbed for Arctic research stations, with researchers from all around the globe studying flora and fauna here and the effects of anthropomorphic climate change. We saw only a handful of people, I guess the rest were all inside or out getting data or something. But one thing that was cool was how much pride some of the countries took in the construction of their building. So we're just departing Nye Alasund now, I will pronounce that incorrectly, which is the northernmost town in the world that is constantly populated. So that's pretty incredible. The real story here for us and for a lot of people on boats is we're just sort of doing the best we can to explore, but also look after the kids. The water is just beautiful. That, that was a walrus. That is the biggest thing I've ever seen! It was all hands on deck again as we navigated through an ice field to get to our new location where we were to hike up alongside a glacier. This is what I was hoping this trip would look like. Way better than yeah. I could have possibly imagined. When Ray Dead suggested, calm. I was like, okay, great. Hopefully we see glaciers and some icebergs, but I didn't think it'd actually happen, and here we are in the most beautiful bit of so, ocean. This is beautiful, but to me, the main event is the boat. I've as soon as I got on board, I, I was like, this is everything I could have hoped for. And then if we see a polar bear and some glaciers, that's just icing on the cake. But I felt like my cake had already been baked. Riley's taking one for the team this time, and Ray and I are gonna get to go on this hike. I think it's two hours to the top of a huge cliff. Apparently we might see some more foxes. We still haven't seen a polar bear, but I'm hopeful. What will we do once we see a polar bear? I'm kind of glad they've made us wait, because if we saw it on the first day, then what, what, what do we have left to look forward to? How have you found the trip, Ray? Incredibly new. Like I'm seeing something new every single day, like the icebergs. It's incredible how blue they get. I can't quite capture it on camera. Made it to the top and we can spot another glacier over there. It's just massive. Glaciers everywhere. What is this? So fun as a guide, you know. Really? It's a snake hole. I think it was kidding. <laughs> so no one actually knows what that hole is, what animal lives in there. Everyone's left the boat. I'll be gone for about three hours. And whilst they do that, these guys clean the boat top to bottom. So I said, hey guys, just move us wherever you need us to be and don't let us walk all over your freshly mopped floor. So we just go from one location to another to another. Darwin keeps using my clippers like it's a telephone. Is someone on the phone? <laughs> hey. Darwin's trying to call you on the phone. But I don't have a phone, so I have to use No, find another phone. We're still hitting icebergs, so we're moving spots tonight. And we're having dinner. I'm so hungry. Are you hungry? Yes. yes. Starving. <laughs> having no high chair for Darwin is a nightmare. Plates flying, forks are just dropping, food everywhere. No one wants to sit with us at our table. We're the kid table. And we're just wrestling with the children. Yeah, everyone else is eating like sophisticated humans. What has the food been like? The food's been great. It's very wholesome, really? yeah. home cooked stuff. Fresh bread, soup. Fresh bread, nice and warm too. It feels good in the belly. So far we've had a lot of soup, we had a lasagna, we had some chicken paella dish. Yeah, it's all been really nice. We go to bed so satisfied. What are you doing? Filled up so many SD cards. I'm so tired, I'm so fiori. But we've done so much since we've been here. Just film non-stop because we're excited and we want to. It's really nice to feel inspired and like motivated. Not even having to think to pick up the camera. It's just like, yes. The novelty still hasn't worn off. Even though it's late at night and I'm here hunched over a laptop. Nowhere I'd rather be.
<laughs> the bit when Elena, she's just done the pole punch. <laughs> she walks past Larry and goes, You're up, Larry. You're up, Larry. I'm not going in there. <laughs> Larry's 80. I love Larry so much, but he's struggling to get up the stairs, let alone do a pole. <laughs> This has been absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's so different not having to do so much work, like from anchoring to navigating to sailing, cooking, cleaning. Just the responsibility. Everything, like we haven't had to do anything. We've asked, but anyway, it's a lot different sailing on our boat. We've actually been really like able to enjoy it, enjoy the surroundings and nature. One super important point that I've given considerable cerebration to is the pronunciation of Glacier. And so instead of the Antipodian Glacier or the American Glacier, we've decided that the best way forwards is the Oxford schoolboy Glacier. The eloquent, smooth and potentially even sexually provocative Glacier <laughs> is how we should all proceed henceforth.